Yo, what up guys, it's Flark, and welcome to my Dragonflight Rated Battleground Star Ratings video, where I go through each class spec by spec and say what their role or roles is in an RBG environment, so what are they there for, what do they do, and how good are they at it in a star rating from 1 to 5, 5 being really good and 1 being not so good, as I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, this is just predictions. Dragonflight is not in fact out yet. Uh, so I will make a re-review of this video when Dragonflight is out and the meta develops to see where I was right and where I was dreadfully wrong. And if you guys have any thoughts on something I might have missed or something I uh, overrated, just go to the comments and tell me your exact ratings and why. It's a great discussion to have and there's a lot of smart people who are going to be watching this video and I'd love to know what you think. Uh, so without any more nonsense from me, any more blabbing, let's get right into the video because this is going to be a lot of content to cover. All right, let's get things started with Warrior, specifically Arms Warrior first, and that is a team fighter, so give it that role. Uh, it's a decent team fighter when it complements other melee. It has Mortal Strike AoE effect, so it can apply uh, Mortal Strike effect to multiple targets at the same time from Storm of Destruction PvP talent. It also has Sweeping Strikes Sharpen Blade, so a big healing reduction, which is very disruptive to those healers, and then it can Fear Bomb them, it can Storm Bolt, it has Intervene and Rally, decent utility, but... Its damage is a little undertuned right now compared to some of the other melee, and its survivability issues would be heavily accentuated in RBGs. It already has them in Arena, but in RBGs, there's more rot pressure, more casters, more spell damage, more instant cast starburst and aflock rot, and I'm pretty sure after their wall goes down, they might be a sitting duck to all that, so unfortunately, three stars as a result for Arms Warrior. Fury Warrior is much of the same. It is a team fighter role, and it does actually have an AoE Mortal Strike. If you Whirlwind before you Rampage, that can apply Slaughterhouse effects to multiple players at the same time. That is pretty incredible, um, but it is hard to upkeep on everybody in a team fight, especially if casters are in the back and melee are in the front, but you can get it on multiple targets, and that's pretty powerful. They have better self-healing, of course, than Arms Warrior, which gives them better survivability generally in this environment, but they're still very susceptible to spike damage, and there's a lot of that. Once you you know, focus target. If there's a target caller in your RBG and you say, ah, oh, the Fury Warrior doesn't have Enraged Regen, let's go him. He is very susceptible to get blown up in maybe one or two globals. Literally, that's it. They could just be gone from the face of the planet. And as an upfront bruiser melee, that's a big weakness to have. So similarly, they would probably be a three-star uh, team fighting spec. Finally, we have Prot. And uh, Prot Warrior would have to fall under the flag carrier role. Uh, I don't think they bring too much to the team fight at all, and unfortunately, they don't bring much there either. Um, their mobility is dwarfed by Vengeance. They may have Leap, but Vengeance has two. Guardian still has uh, a lot of answers for tankiness. And Prot Warrior kind of has to have that thing where it builds rage to apply um, survivability, but you don't really want to be in. You kind of want to be moving away and not taking the upfront damage because Prot Warrior plus the 60% damage increase in a PvP environment that tanks get does not have the toolkit to just stay in against all of that onslaught, star surges, frost DK damage, aflock rot. It's just probably not going to happen. So unfortunately, one star FC spec there. I don't see it at all. All right, moving on, we have Warlock, a very dominant force in RBGs. We're going to start things off with Affliction, whose roles are team fight and base sitting, though you would never want to sit an Aflock because that's taking them away from their high priority team fight action. Uh, the fact that they can is just an added benefit to them. It's versatility. They have extreme tankiness, port, CC, spammable CC, decent damage, um, a pet to help spin the base. So all of that just makes it so they could sit a base in a pinch if needed. But where they really shine is team fight. They have, like I said, port, extreme team utility, spammable CC, massive survivability. I mean, self-healing, dark pact, it's all incredible. Walls, walls to make it so you can't disrupt them for a while so they can guaranteed get their bursts off. And then you have aflock pressure. Dot damage, rot pressure, UAs get dispelled. Nope, you all die now because if you ever MD against an Aflock, it's an instant loss, right? This is incredible how much they provide to a team fight. Now, they did recently get a PvP tuning nerf, but it doesn't matter. It's, our, it's Aflock and RBGs. They got a lot of targets to dot. They can put agony on everything and they will have pressure. So this is an easy five-star spec from utility and taking pressure off your healers and priority target. It's all It's got it all. Aflock is great. 
Next, we have Demo Lock, and it can also base sit and team fight, but I don't think it team fights nearly as well. For base sitting, it does it great. It's got a pet, it's got the pet stun. It has all the same things that Aflock does, and maybe a little bit more. So as a base sitter in a pinch, it is going to be fantastic. But where it falls is the team fight. Uh, in arenas, Demo is so good because it can apply a ton of pressure to one player. Uh, from all of its pets, they're always just hitting one guy, and they're a little clunky, especially in AoE situations. Demo Lock's win condition of that tyrant and getting all the pets out and tunneling it on one guy is not quite as useful in RBGs because there's seven targets, and classes that can ramp up damage based on how many targets there are generally do better. I'm not saying Demo has no cleave, but it's certainly not known for being just a paddy class, right? Pad meaning just getting out damage instantly. Demo is more of a setup and hit one guy. A, a good demo could absolutely take somebody out of the fight, but I think there's a lot of classes that team fight overall better right now, which means that is a three-star spec overall demo luck. Destro, on the other hand, five stars. Incredible. The burst window that this spec can have with Bane of Havoc, Coil, and then AoE Chaos Bolts. There is a talent that makes all those Chaos Bolts explode, and you're going to be seeing a lot of that on a team fight, on a center node, pulled in by DKs, which we'll get to in a second. Just complete terror of a team fight if let to free cast or using unending resolve to make it so they cannot be kicked and finding a way to get these bolts off in the aoe coil so that's cc'ing their entire team by the way that's an aoe mortal coil um it could be some of the highest output that you've ever seen in a short window uh this is going to define a lot of team fights i think Destro has the answer. It has spike damage. It has cleave. It has AoE pressure in all sorts of form. It even has that channel demon fire. It has so much that it can do um, to disrupt a team fight while still having the tankiness and crowd control effects of Warlock specs. So five stars for Destro Lock. Maybe I'm overrepresenting this because they need secondary stats to shine, but I don't know, man. I'm feeling like a lot of people are going to struggle to live through even one bolt, let alone 10. So Destro Lock, my prediction, five stars. Okay, moving on to my class, and I promise there's no bias, but Frost DK, five stars. This is a team fighter right up there, and it's got a ton of team utility to boot. It's got a bomb limb to pull everybody into a pile, AoE stun, AoE blind, another AoE stun, insane cleave damage, instant damage, single target pressure, frost strike damage, obliterate damage, spammable, chains of ice, 70% undispellable slow, double death grip, double death's advance, CC immunity, CC itself. I mean, it is ridiculous how perfect Frost DK is as a melee for a team fight. In fact, I would give it an honorary six stars as best team fight melee, uh, no doubt. It has everything that the DK toolkit has as well as an AoE stun, which the other two DK specs do not have. And that is so impactful because as you know, getting pseudo interrupted in, a, in an RBG as a healer when you're getting constantly CC'd is very difficult to deal with. Well, what if it's a four second stun into a two second stun into a five second blind and of course it's going to break but it's not going to break on everybody and people are just not able to play that is what the abomination limb go is and frost dk does it best easy five stars as for unholy dk it is still a dk which means i have to give it five stars i do not think it is as dominant as frost dk but it has all the tools it has aoe blind it has AoE Burst. It has the Rot Pressure to pair with those Aflocks in the Disease build that it can make. It has Double Grip. It has Abomination's Limb. It has AMS. It has IBF. Spammable Chains. All of these tools, right? It has the answers that DKs have. Uh, it's just missing the AoE stun. So if anything, I would give Frost DK 5.5, maybe Unholy DK 4.5, but it's all irrelevant. DK specs are very, very good in RBGs. You always see one in the meta and that Death Grip alone. Uh, can generally, I mean, you pull somebody into a terrible spot, then you can double grip them into a terrible spot, and everybody goes them and then asphyxiate, and you can kill that player. Once you start eliminating players, you can slowly snowball the team fight in your favor. So on Holy DK, still five stars. All right, Blood DK. Uh, this one's very interesting. I'm going to give it the nod as a team fighter, not a flag carrier. Isn't that crazy? And the reason for this is they have two strategies. One is just going in there and doing a ton of AoE damage, which they absolutely can, and I'll get to in a second. And the other one is obviously what frustrates many players, myself included, is just using their death grips to pull healers out of the team fight and keep them there forever so they're down a healer. You may down, be down a DPS, but being down a healer is a bigger problem because healing, to healing a team fight, even if they're down a DPS, is very difficult. So... They have those options, but the, the AoE portion, the AoE damage portion is more interesting to me. They still have A-Bomb Limb. 
They have a decent amount of AoE damage and rot from their disease. But now they also have this Shattering Bones now talent, which you should look up if you're not familiar with, that makes them do a ton of AoE damage when their bone shields drop. And you can drop them uh, in, by choice by using the talent Tombstone. And that's a lot of AoE burst, which you can pair with your PvP talent Death Chains, which not only amplifies your damage, but all the damage done from everybody in the RBG behind you, which means Death Chains in an RBG environment with all of those players doing damage could easily be 35-40% of your damage. Pair that with the Tombstone Burst and the, uh, the A-Bomb Limb Burst and the Disease Pressure, and you've actually got a very high output team fighter. Plus, it's very tanky, so you don't really have to heal it, and you have this very disruptive force in team fights. I honestly think I have to give it four stars as a team fighter alone, which is crazy to think about, but... Try it out for yourself, see if I'm right. Next up is Druid, and this is going to have a lot of different roles to fulfill, but we'll start off with Boomkin, and of course that's team fight and bases. As a base assaulter, it's got CC, it's got stealth, so it can come up unannounced, and it's CC, Incap Roar, Bash, Clone, it does not DR with Rogue CC, the other premier assaulter that we'll get to soon. Um, which means you can get a base by yourself, or if you need that base right now, no questions asked, you can do it with a rogue and you pair perfectly as that combo. If you've seen a rogue boomy go for a base, you know that base is probably going to be lost soon. It's very tough to defend. Um, but of course, on the other side, you've got a perfect team fighter. Uh, they have AoE damage, Starfall, Sunfire, Moonfire, it's all pad, it's very easily applicable, and then when a target gets low, triple star surge right to the face. There's no setup required, it's very easy, uh... Very quick to get off, uh, effortless, you know, it's just in your face, instant damage. And of course, they can immediately get out of the team fight with their massive mobility. So they can go back to their base, they can come in, they can defend a node, they can assault a node, they can come into the team fight and immediately make an impact. That is the power of Boomkin. So versatile, so good at everything it does. Easy five stars. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that one. So, of course, next we have Feral. Uh, people have told me I'm underrepresenting Feral's. Uh, AoE damage a little bit, like in my arena video, you could check that out. Apparently they have this instant nuke that they can apply, and that's pretty powerful for team fights. But after that's done, if their team did not all instantaneously die, it's tough to kind of like bleed up everybody in an RBG environment. That's generally not been very good for Feral, and that's why they've never been really a team fighter. So I'm going to hold my reservations there and say there's still a base playing, assaulting, defending uh, spec. And not a team fighter yet, but if I'm wrong, I'll be happy to admit it when I do the re-review of this video. But let's say as a base assaulter, they're probably a four-star spec. Uh, they can do just about everything Boomkin can do without the versatility, and they're just worse versions of Rogue for base play in every way. But they can still stealth, they can defend a base, they got CC, they can assault a base, they have answers, and they're still a good spec. Maybe three stars would be a little better since Rogue just trounces them with the addition of Blind and Kidney. We'll get to that in a second, but we'll see. Four stars for now. Next up is Guardian Druid, and of course that's a flag carrier. Right now they would be a team fighter because they're overwhelming damage, but they're losing a lot of that come Dragonflight. So we're going to have to give them the flag carrier role, and they were a 10-star spec throughout Shadowlands. There was nothing even close to the world of power that Guardian had. Now I think I'll just bring them down to a 5-star spec. I still think they're going to be a premier FC, though I think there will be other classes that can FC as well. Something that did not happen once in any season throughout all of Shadowlands. So that still is dropping them down a lot. But it seems like they've got the mobility that they need, the toolkit that they need still, their survivability, the frenzied regens. It's all very powerful. Being able to heal yourself without having to hit targets like some of the other tanks is extremely important. And Guardian just does it all so well. So Guardian, easy 5-star FC. Probably the premier FC, but maybe not just dominant enough that other FCs can shine. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, and finally we have Restoration Druid, and for my eyes, that is a five-star healing specialization. Uh, it has mobility, which is very important for healers because sometimes you have to peel out and go heal somebody at a base that you're about to lose, or just a team fight that you might be losing. You have to redirect your healers from team fight to team fight if there's multiple going on in the map. And the best thing then is a mobile healer that can get to those places exactly when they need to, and Arjuid has that in spades. It also has extreme throughput, very high output in an AoE situation, good single target burst heals from NS, um, and decent CC from Clone, Incap, Bash. They have the Druid CC toolkit while still being a very high output healer, so 
In every regard, they just do the RBG scene right. I don't think they've ever been unplayable. The only problem is that they could be a little squishy and generally just good, good uh, positioning and bear form usage can help with that. But if they are overly squishy and a kill target in every situation, then we would have to drop this down to four or three stars. But my idea is that they will be able to handle it with good positional play, and that's a five-star healer spec. All right, let's mix things up with Mage. And of course, this is going to be very unfortunate to Mage mains, as I think they are not great. <laughs> Got to start out with Fire, and that is a base sitter team fight? It's neither, really. It doesn't do anything well. It doesn't do base sitting as well as the other Mage specs, because they only have one block and no pet. And it doesn't do team fighting well, because their damage is really focused in short windows. They don't have any pad. Their AoE is not that impressive. Their AoE burst is not that impressive. And unfortunately... Their main tool that makes them so good in a PvP environment, Polymorph, is counter-synergistic with the entire meta. It takes all the Aflock dots off, all the Shadow Priest dots off, all the Unholy dots off, and heals a player to full. Of course, if you do it on a healer in the back lines, it's not so bad, but most team fights get value by pressuring every player. And if you can only poly one player that's sitting in the far back, you're not really doing that much anyway. Every other CC that doesn't break and doesn't remove those things like DK Blind, Fear, Hex, those tools are so much better than Polymorph, so its main CC is detrimental, and its AoE pressure and pad is not great. Fire Mage is a one-star spec in both regards. It just doesn't do anything well. As for Frost, we can give it a nod. It's a much better base sitter. It's got a pet. It's got two blocks. That just, by design, makes it better than Fire in every possible way. And its teamfight is okay because it doesn't rely quite on that RMP-esque 3, 2, 1, go. It has some AoE damage, it has the Frozen Orb, it has the Blizzard, it has the instant damage, it has uh, some pretty high one-shot potential as well if left to free cast. Now, I don't think many people will do that. It's certainly not quite as impactful as Destro as well with the Bane Coil AoE bolts. But it's there, and it can base it way better. So let's bump it up to three stars. It still has some of the mage problems where every other version of the casters kind of do what they do in an RBG environment better. I mean, compare Frost Mage to Boom Cannon, that's not a favorable comp. Uh, now Arcane, and what a complex pick. For base hitting, it doesn't have the double block or the water elemental. And for team fighting, it really has just one school for everything. But it's very slippery, and its burst output is so high from what I've heard on beta. There's a chance where it could just, if left to its own devices, slips out of the team fight and sat, sits back in turrets for a few seconds, it could kill six players at the same time. I've seen the burst. It's pretty remarkable. I worry that because of its survivability issues, because if it ever gets pulled into a team fight, it could just get cleaved down instantly. It's bad to rot damage. It's just not quite the premier RBG focus, but I'm going to give it the nod on burst damage alone that it brings it up to a three-star spec. And believe me, if you've ever seen Arcane's viability in RBGs in the past, giving it three stars is a huge nod to Arcane because every expansion, it tends to be one or zero. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't make it. I don't make the class, but three stars from me. Okay, moving on to a doozy. We've got Rogue, and we're going to start things off with Sub Rogue, the premier base assaulter. Uh, base defender, objective player, what is it, 10 stars? 20? 46? 72 stars? No, it's it's just the 5, but unbelievable. It is the best at this in the entire game. Sap into Blind can just take a base right there, but you also have Kidney, you have Shadowy Duel, a tool that no other spec in the game has access to. It's incredible. You can put people in the Shadow Realm, and they can only see you. That's just so incredible for setting, uh, attacking a base. Also, you have Mark for Death Guinea, of course, and Shadow Dance Triple Cheap for FCs. Um, you can even dive into a team fight if you want and immediately cause disruption by just taking one of their healers out of the game, then choosing a kill target and just saying, on me, kidney bomb, three, two, one, kidney bomb, and you take them out of the game as well by killing them. Uh, Sub Rogue can do a little bit of everything, and it does everything that it does perfectly. It's the best at it. So Sub Rogue, easy, five, ten, twenty, okay, five star spec, absolutely. All right, and then, of course, Assassination Rogue, and by nature of being a rogue spec, it does everything well, probably five stars. Compared to Sub, it is not as powerful, though it does have some added versatility and that it can team fight a little better. It has AoE damage in the form of bleeds on multiple targets, poison easily applied to multiple targets, and uh, it still has the Kidney Bomb uh, toolkit that uh, can, it can instantly add to any team fight to take somebody out of it. Um, so it's very powerful. It misses Shadowy Duel, but it still has Sap in the blind, and you can absolutely cap a base with an Assassination Rogue. Um, 
I, I, I don't, I can't bring any rogue spec spoiler alert below five stars because it's just premiere for an RBG environment, but mm, just let it be known that sub is definitely the better spec despite them both being five stars. Which leads us into Outlaw and a very similar thing here. Um, it does have a little bit of interesting tools in that it has short blind and other ways to get their cooldowns back up faster, which is fantastic for both sitting and assaulting bases. It also has Blade Flurry for team fights. Now, I don't think Outlaw without the fast evasion is going to be a premier team fighting spec, um, but it does have some AoE damage. It does, it can contribute to uh, cleave goes from like a DK, which is crazy. No other rogue spec can do that as well. And again, still has blind, kidney bomb a target, and you're good to go. So every rogue spec, as you've seen, gets the five-star nod because it is a rogue in RBG, but let it be said one final time, it's very clear that Sub is the premier rogue spec in an RBG environment. Next up, we have Paladin. Well, we'll start with Rep Paladin, and while they tend to be able to outweigh their utility deficiency and survivability deficiency in an RBG environment with their overwhelming AoE damage. I think there are some other melee that just do that a little better. DH, spoiler, Frosty K for sure, not even close. Frosty K has the blind and the AoE stun, while Rhett's utility is bop, sank, sack. You can see it's focused generally on just one player, which is not good when you have 10 players on the team. You want to be able to disrupt or aid multiple players at the same time, and Red is more focused on an arena setup for its utility. Meanwhile, like I said, its survivability issues are going to come in full force as all of its counters got buffed, and the spell damage, the rot pressure, the casters, the big chaos bolts, the big frost DK damage could easily pick a ret without bubble, and they're immediately taken out of the team fight. The second they don't have bubble, you could just say go ret, and if you say three, two, one, go. There's not a lot of buttons anybody can press with any cross CC on the healer to keep that guy alive for more than one global. So a lot of deficiencies here that's generally overweighed by how much nuclear damage they do, and they still will output a ton, but I just don't think it's enough to outweigh like Frosty K, Demon Hunter. Red is, is down a little bit. So as a team fighter, the roll up there, it is a three-star specialization, and that might be very generous. I think two stars could be easy. We'll see soon. Tell me your predictions in the comments below. Next, we have Holy Paladin, and Holy Paladin has some pretty solid output right now for a healer. Uh, it's missing a little bit of mobility. Freedom Steed is nice, but sometimes you have to use Freedom in the team fight, which means you have no way of getting out. Um, and it's very susceptible to being gripped in and trained. H Pals do not quite have the, the defensive toolkits or slipperiness that some of the other uh, healers have, which of course we'll get to later. Um, which means they could easily just fall over. The same problem that Red has, once Bubble is down, they are a kill target and people will be able to take advantage of that. You have double grip from DKs, the Kidney Bomb go, you have Demon Hunters just chasing them around the map, Fell Eruption, they could really make an h -Pal's life miserable. And that is going to make them hard to play in a team fight environment. Three stars from me on h -Pal. I think the output is there, but I think the survivability is not. And the team utility is nothing like having Dome from a Disc Priest or Mobility from an Ardrid or Revival from a Mistweaver, so... Three-star spec from me. Sorry, Paladins. It doesn't seem like I am giving you a lot of credit right now. Maybe I will be wrong. Next, we have Prop Pally, which I guess is a flag carrier. It cannot be a team fighter because its utility could be killed. Queens can just die in an RBG environment, and you can have one spell bop for one guy, and then it's over, right? So Prop Pally... It's had off healing potential in the past, but that's been nerfed heavily and is still nerfed in the PvP environment. So let's give it the FC tag, I guess, and which is probably just worse than all the other FCs. Better than Prot Warrior, to be sure. It's got mobility, it's got the long steed, it's got the immune steed, but it dies at a kidney, and that is a huge problem because there are rogues in RBGs and they'll press getting shot on the flag carriers. So a hesitant two stars. I don't think it does anything well right now. It could really sit a base, but why would you sit a prop pally? That means you have to have a prop pally on your team when you could just hit any of the fantastic base hitters that can also go assault a base like Rogue and Boomkin. So, no, 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 sorry, prop pally two stars, and that might be being generous. All right, the next class up is a doozy. This is Demon Hunter, and we're going to start things up with Havoc, and that is a five-star specialization. Another one where I'd give it six stars if I could, because this thing is incredible. It has every tool you need for an RBG environment. Mobility, check. Area effect denial, darkness, check. Good survivability, self-healing, blur, check. AoE damage, AoE stuns, single target stun, single target CC, instant AoE burst, single target burst from Essence Break. It has absolutely everything. 
It can get into a team fight with its mobility. It can get out of a team fight with its mobility. It can immediately cause an impact on an A-bomb limb go on any go where you just come in there, Nova, and start instantly bursting. So anyway, I started blasting. Demon Hunter is ridiculous. It has so much throughput. It has so many answers, so many tools. It even has reverse magic in a team fight if you need that. Insane self feeling, great survivability, self-sufficient class. It can be anywhere and everywhere at the same time. Havoc Demon Hunter is good. It's good. Five stars. Maybe six. Next, Vengeance Demon Hunter. FC roll. A hesitant five stars. The only reason it didn't see any play last expansion is because Guardian was so overwhelmingly busted. But I think, as I said, the Guardian's still going to be good. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's going to be toned back to the reality where everybody else plays the game instead of Guardians living their own little world. And Vengeance has a huge toolkit for FCing. It did in Legion and, and early BFA when it was completely dominant, right? Because it's got massive mobility, the double leap to immediately escape any situation. You've got pretty decent survivability. Um, you've actually got AoE damage too if you are just trying to finalize the last few kills on offense. Vengeance can actually contribute to that. You have even some weird utility like Ilden's Grasp to throw somebody somewhere else. And it's also a long stun. You've got AoE CC from Fear and Silence. You've got tools as a vengeance and it's all supplemented by that massive mobility just having the leap leap to get from the middle of a team fight to 80 yards away from a team fight is what made vengeance so good but in an rbg environment that gets even crazier because you can use that leap to get up z-axis to get out onto terrain to get out of the team fight not only by distance but just by z-axis by getting around the ramp in um Worse on Gulch or up to the second floor in Twin Peaks, they can do some unspeakable things that no other tank can do just by the nature of having that double leap. While Warriors have Heroic Leap, they're worse at survivability in every way, and having a second charge is just so impactful. If one leap can be that good, just think about two. Next, we have an interesting class. This one is Shaman, and we're going to start things out with Enhance, and uh, we're going to give them the Team Fighter role because they don't really do anything else well, and this one's a tough one. I don't think they do anything better than the other melee. They have Sustain, but it's not that great. It's not Patty Sustain like some of the other melees, the Demon Hunters, the Frosty Kids of the world. Their AoE stun is terrible in comparison. They don't have the grip. They don't have the limb. They don't have the mobility. They don't have the survivability. When they're using their mobility to escape, they can't do anything else. They, they have to sit in Ghost Wolf. Um, they're just not very impactful in an RBG environment, and all the other team fighting melee just do everything they can do better. Um, that's unfortunate, but one, one star. I mean, after the 25% nerf on beta to every ability, they're not oppressively overpowered for damage output, and I just don't think they have the toolkit. I guess I could bump it up to two because of tremor and grounding, uh, but God, when would you ever take an Enhancement Shaman over? You know what? I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. One star. Sorry. I'm sorry. One star for Enhancement Shaman. It just doesn't do anything well. Ellie Shaman has a lot of spike pressure, but I think it's going to be a beneficiary of secondary stats. I think Ellie Shamans will be coming out everywhere once we have a lot of secondary stats at the end of the expansion. Early in the expansion, I don't see anything it can do better than Lock or Boomkin, so... Two stars for Ellie Shaman. The spike is there, but setup is very difficult. And you don't have pad. That's a very important thing that I've said a lot of times in this video. Pad means I press button, I do damage. If you have to set up those goes and they disrupt you in any way, then you're not as good as the classes that just go in there and instantly impact the team fight. I've said that so many times, but I wanted to explain it better because it, it matters so much in Ellie. They have damage. They have AoE damage. I'm sure they burst very high in PvE, but it's not the same way of of Boomkin, press button, do damage. It's you got to set some things up. You got to set the flame shocks up. You got to get those procs. You got to get a lightning rod on somebody. Then you got to start bursting. It's not, and you got to spend your maelstrom to do that when uh, Sunfire just immediately generates uh, astral power and immediately you start supplying your dots. It's just not the same to have to go flame shock. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, flame shock. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, God, I got dispelled. Okay, re flame shock. It's just not. Pad and setup are just so polarizingly different in RBGs right now, and the, the pad is what you really need to have an instant impact. So Ellie, two stars, and I'm very sorry. When secondary sets get higher, maybe that changes. And now we have our Shaman. And, uh... Oh, uh-oh. Shaman mains are going to be disliking this video. <laughs> I haven't been good to... That's a two-star spec. I, I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't have the four set that procs chain heals. It has to cast spells, which is terrible with all the pseudo CC and interrupts that an RBG environment has. 
It does not have that, as much throughput as some of the other specs that can just on demand just pop out a Radiance or AoE heal with our Druid Hawks. Um, its utility isn't good. It doesn't have dome. It doesn't have as good mobility in the way that it has to mobility. It has to shift into Ghost Wolf. It can't press like any other buttons. It can die. It can get gripped in and just die die instantly. Once its wall is down, it has nothing. It doesn't have like dome, paints up, focused will, uh, ultimate radiance. It does not have the toolkit that a lot of healers have right now. Uh, and if you kill the tide, their throughput is very, very low. Two stars. I'm sorry, shamans. I hope that I'm wrong. Believe me. I'll come back to this video soon and we'll see what happens in the meta, but I'm not feeling it. So that leads us right into Priest which I was talking about, and they're going to get the uh, the better end of the stick for healing for sure. But we'll start off with Shadow. This is a team fighting spec again, of course. And uh, man, it's good at doing that. <laughs> it has instant CC, instant damage, instant AOE CC with fear, instant AOE CC with horrify that doesn't even DR with their fear. And it counts as a stun pretty much because you can't do anything while you're horrified. It can immediately change in the, uh, the team fight. It can have an instant impact. It can... Self-heal, it can off-heal, Vampiric Embrace, Void Swap, it has utility, it has healing, it can supplement the healers if they're getting CC'd, it can do damage, it can do AOE damage, it can CC an entire team, it is disruptive, it is powerful, it is instant, it is rot pressure, it goes great with the other casters, and its CC goes even better with the other casters, um, because it can instant stun silence a healer in the backline, which almost no other caster could do very well. Uh, Shadow Priest, wow, good, spec, five stars. Which brings us to the premier RBG healer, that is Discipline Priest. Oh my god, Ultimate Radiance, Dome, and Paints Up is like an entire team fight healing toolkit in and of itself. You get Ultimate Radiance for the huge output, it applies Atonement to everybody, then you can put Purge the Wicked on everybody with all your damage modifiers. Now you're doing damage while healing your whole team, oh my god. Every time you press Radiance, you can top like six players at the same time. Not to mention the Dome is the best button in RBG healer history. Because A-Bomb Limb and Big AoE goes and AoE stuns are so impactful and you can just put Dome on every single one because your PvP talent makes it a short cooldown and 50% damage reduction. So you say, ah, that is their offensive go. Let me put Dome on it. That stopped it. As one healer, you can counter the entire thing. Incredible. What an amazing button. Not to mention, you still have paints up. So if another healer is getting bursted in the back lines, maybe they swap to him with the casters. You just paints up him. And now he's okay. Or you paints up an FC. Discs are good. Throughput. Damage reduction, they have it all. You pair them with some mobile healers, like we talked about already, our Druid and Miss Weaver Monk to soon come, and you've got the whole toolkit of a healer that you could possibly need. Disc Priest is supplementary to every single healing comp. Use Disc Priest, five stars, five stars, 10 stars, so good. All right, and now we have Holy Priest, and if you remembered what I just talked about in Disc, what made it good, Holy Priest has none of those things. They do not have Radiance, they do not have Dome of Light, and they don't have Pain Suck. They do have a lot of throughput, but they're missing all of the utility that Disc brings. And Disc brings the same throughput just by pressing one button, Radiance. They have offensive pressure, but instead of having Atonement healing to supplement their healing while they're going offensive, they don't have that at all. So you actually have to sacrifice healing for damage. Their throughput is good, but it's it's dwarfed by the Ultimate Radiance PvP taunt. They have no damage reduction effects. They are just a worse version of Disc. They have a lot of the same tools like Purge and Mind Games, but... This can do everything that they can do, but better. So three stars is very, very generous for Holy Priest. I think it's going to be lower, but it seems like anything with a lot of healing output could always have some merit in an RBG environment, despite Disc doing every single thing better. Let's take a look at Monk now. Windwalker Monk we'll start with, and of course that's a team fighter role. Um, its damage and output is surreal. It does have a little bit of setup, and we've talked about how setup can be a problem, especially with a squishy class, which Windwalker can be. Uh, once it's out of walls, it just takes the most damage all game, and porting out is not quite as good when you have 70 rows of dots on you, or you could get just charged or chased by a demon hunter, and, and you're not really doing a lot. That said, they have leg sweep and AoE damage, and those are really, really good tools for melee. So I think this is like a boom or bust spec. For that reason, I'm going to give it a semi-hesitant four stars, because I think the best players could easily just completely destroy a team fight and you can rop trank or you can rop dome to knock them ring of peace that is knock them out of those area effect denials rop them out of darkness right and you can immediately enlist all of your other melee to keep doing their maximum pressure which is crazy so they're high pressure they aid others to do high pressure the only problem is that they're a little squishy so they're glass cannon maybe they're boom or bust but they've got answers now they've got dampen harm they've got diffuse magic so let's give it a four star rating 
because I think the boom is more likely than the bust for Windwalker monks. And now we have Mystery of a Monk, and that's a big five stars for me. The output is surreal. Revival completely answers all magical goes, takes all of the Aflock dots off, all the Shadow Priest dots off without causing any of the backlash. And you, I talked already about how good I think those specs are going to be. So the answer to those specs is always going to be good. And that is what Revival with the Peace, Peace Weaver talent will do for Mist Weaver. It has mobility. It has life cocoon. It has uh, port. It can get out of hairy situations. It can position well. It has so much output. It has leg sweep. It has touch of death even if you want to finish somebody off. That comes in for you and overextends. It has para. It has rop. It has so much. The throughput, the revival alone makes it a five-star spec, so when you add on all those other goodies, we're talking six stars. This is going to be an integral part of every healing comp. Mist Weavers are seeing the love. Five-star spec. Easy. That, of course, brings us to Brewmaster, and it's not horrible. It's obviously the FC spec role. It, it, it's not going to provide a team fight or base assaulting. It's a, it's a, it's a flag carrier, but... As far as flag carriers go, it's not atrocious. It has triple roll now, and its mobility is very high, and it can port back up top after getting after dropping down to like bring the melee down and then port up to a Z-axis, right, when you have the flag in your hands, and that's a really good tactic. Very strong, and its survivability isn't terrible. Of course, the stagger mechanic is not good. Like, Prot Warrior's survivability just does not lead well to an RBG environment, and Brewmaster has a little bit of that trouble, though I think it's overall more tanky in a PvP environment, but it does not have what Guardian and Vengeance has. Let's give it a three star. I think that's a perfect place for it. It has an interesting mobility toolkit, and Port is, you cannot understate how good Port is to drop all the melee off of a cliff, down to the first level and then port back up to the second level so they have to run all the way back up to catch you. I mean, that alone has to warrant a three-star rating. I don't know if it's enough to just overtake the other FCs, though. My, my guess is obviously that it won't do that. But give Brewmaster the nod. Three stars. All right, we're coming to a close here with Hunter, and we're going to have Marksmanship Hunter. And while Marksman I did not give that much credit to an arena environment and RBGs, I think it's going to do just fine. It has the most range of any range class. It doesn't have cast, so it can get those huge damage abilities off without worried about getting kicked. It has rapid fire. It has decent uh, AoE from trick shots. It can pick off healers. It's the best, the best at picking off clothies or healers in the back lines that any spec could say. It's all physical damage. It tears right through their tiny armor, and you can do it from anywhere on the map. It's like you're actually a sniper playing Marksman. The class fantasy with Marksman and RBG is through the roof. Let me just tell you, Marksman hunters really do feel like they're a sniper class, and they do it actually very well. Now, of course, if they get gripped in and an AoE stun go, they are very squishy. They are glass, but the power of having that much range is that they could just trinket, disengage out, and just run all the way to the back. If you chase them all the way to the back of the map, that's generally a bad place for you to be because you're probably 90 yards away from your healers, and the Marksman, on the other hand, is with all three of their healers. So Marksman has that benefit of being in the back lines of an RBG to really terrorize doing exactly what it does well while not letting its weaknesses get exposed because of the RBG uh, dynamic, how team fights actually work. As for a base hitter, it has pet, stun, trap. It can honestly do that pretty well. And that, because it has that versatility and that team fight impact, five stars. Congratulations, Mark Marksman Hunters. You're still doing a great job. BM Hunter, on the other hand, is a base sitter at heart. It's got that good survivability and great 1v1 potential because you just kite around in circles and let your pets whittle them away. You run around the bases in circles just trying to avoid all the damage that you can. I think some of the other base sitters are probably better because of stealth and their ability to assault bases as well. And its teamfight potential is very, very low. Um, its AoE damage is not really that high. Its pets can just get cleaved to death. And it does not apply much single target burst at all. Unlike Marks, who can pop a clothy from across the map, BM is a slow whittling pressure that, that generally lends to an arena environment. So from the base sitting nature alone, I'm going to give it three stars. Uh, but it doesn't really do much else well. Finally, we have Survival, and I didn't actually give that one that much credit in the arena. Some people think I was underrepresenting it, but for RBGs, I'm going to probably not give it much credit either. Sorry. The, the base sitting, again, is just like BM, but slightly worse. And the team fighting, while it can chuck bombs and do some range damage, it just feels like it's more about getting those goes off in single target situations with cross AC. And that's what it's all about for jungle and threes, but that's not what RBGs are about. It doesn't 
do goes and RBGs and the trap is just going to break instantly. I mean, you definitely can try and take their healers out of the game and throw in some bombs, throw in some ranged damage, but you're not an upfront bruiser melee and you're not really a full caster. So while in threes, that can be very good as you have a hybrid uh, play style and RBGs, it feels like you're just doing both things, but worse than every other spec that does those things better. Sorry, I think two stars for survival. And last but not least, we have Evoker, and I'm sorry for the cop-out here. This has been a heck of a long video regardless, so I think you guys are okay with having things wind down to an end. Question mark. I have no history. I have no data. Only we have beta, and we know how drastically different betas are than the actual competitive bracket. There is nobody testing Evoker and RBGs right now because beta-rated battlegrounds are completely unheard of. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the healing is going to be and how the DPS is going to be. If I had to, if I was forced to make a prediction, I would say Evoker uh, healer is probably a four-star healer and damage is probably a three-star damage. I have no idea why. It just seems like it has decent output, but maybe still set up re required. And I don't know. Do anybody know how to play it or play around it or play with it? I don't know yet. Nobody has tested this in RBGs and saying anything other than a question mark would just be hubris on my part. Those are my guesses, but they are very, very faded guesses. Please do not take those very seriously. I really have no idea, and I'm sorry about that, but I cannot wait to discover how evokers fit into the RBG scene once Dragonflight is released. So there you have it. Wow, whoo, that was a heck of a long video. That's every class should be separated by the timestamps down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any thoughts at all, any ratings that you think I got wrong, any reasons why, anything that you guys want to discuss in the comments, please let me know. I will read every single one. I'd love to hear what you guys think is going to develop this RBG meta into Dragonflight. I'm so excited, and I think all of you guys are probably excited too. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think I got wrong, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.